Hey, Divi Nation, thanks for dropping by our documentation to learn all about Divi's layout and typography customizer settings. So some of the most important settings that you're gonna configure on your website are the general or global layout and typography settings because they're gonna set the tone for just about every page of your website. And in this video, we're gonna walk you through those options and uh, kind of give you an idea of not only how to configure them, but some best practices as well. Check it out. In this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of Divi's layout and typography settings within the theme customizer. The layout settings allow you to adjust those high level sizing and spacing options for your website. And you could do things like change the spacing between columns and rows and sections. You can even adjust the size of your sidebar and also enable a box layout if you want. The typography settings allow you to adjust the default appearance of your text across the entire website. This includes options like font style, color, size, line height, letter spacing, and you can even choose from hundreds of different fonts. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a closer look at the layout and typography settings together. To find your layout settings within the theme customizer, you first need to go and deploy your theme customizer. You can find that in the back end of your WordPress dashboard and you navigate to Divi and then Theme Customizer. Once you're there, you'll see this panel here with all of your options. You're gonna to go to General Settings and then Layout Settings. The Layout Settings allow you to adjust those broad, wide-ranging spacing elements of your website. And one of those options include this first one here to enable a box layout. So if I click that, you can see, you know, now I've changed the look of my site in just one click and I'm exposed an additional background color here that my website now is gonna be sitting on top of in a, in a box format. You could also adjust the content width. Uh, that would be the default content width for all of my web pages on my website. And this, of course, would also apply to using the Divi Builder as well. So all of your, you know, rows and uh, the content within the, those rows will automatically adjust to this content width. And you can see how easy it is to adjust it with this little dial here. You can see that inner container here that holds my content will change. Go back to the default. And you can also override this default content width whenever you're adding, you know, full width modules and things like that using the Divi Builder. The website gutter width refers to the distance between your columns. So, for example, if I scroll down to this four column row here, if you notice, there's some white space in between each of my photo modules here. And if I adjust my gutter width from a three to a four, you'll see that increases. Um, and then if I shrink it down to a two, you'll see I have less space. And then a one would be essentially no space in between. So you can set that default gutter width here. This next option is to use a custom sidebar width. This refers to the default WordPress sidebar that, that you see um, whenever you're not using the Divi Builder. So if I were to go to this page here, you can see that uh, this is just a standard WordPress page. I'm not using the Divi Builder and I have this kind of default um, sidebar that shows up because I'm ha I have a right sidebar in my layout by default. And I can go to my selection here to use custom sidebar width and then I can adjust that sidebar width here. The section height option here allows you to adjust the heights of your sections um, by giving them some additional spacing at the top and bottom of each of those sections to you know increase the spacing of your website. If I wanted to increase that spacing you can see that my spacing at the top and bottom of each of my sections will grow, um, adding some additional padding there. 
and you can see that if I bring it down all the way to zero and they're at their shortest that they can be. Let's go back to the default. Same thing can be done for your rows. So the rows would be the, uh, you know, that building block within the larger section and you can increase the height of your rows, thus giving your site more spacing or less. This range is all the way down to zero and you can see that I have no spacing between my rows if I do that. And this theme accent color is really important uh, and it's important that you actually uh, adjust this color first before you make any other color adjust adjustments within the theme customizer. And that's because this color will automatically adjust other options, other color settings within the theme customizer. So it's very convenient to go ahead and make, if you know your secondary color for your theme, to go ahead and update it here and just kind of make the adjustments after that. And this will change things like your, if I go down to my navigation settings and I go to my primary menu, you'll see the default theme accent color will be used for your active link colors, your drop down menu line color. There's like, I think, close to 20 other places where a color is going to be changed when you update your theme accent color. All right, so that takes care of our layout settings. Let's go over to our typography settings. To find the typography settings, you'll find them underneath your general settings from the theme customizer, right under your layout settings. Click on typography. And you can see that this addresses all of my, you know, broad scale um, text options or text customizations. And this includes options for my body text, header text, and also my links here. If I wanted to give my site a default body text of 16, maybe I think 14 is too small, I can do that. And you can see it, you know, adjust on your site globally. Now make sure though, if you start to make adjustments here from the theme customizer, and you don't see those changes taking effect on your website here. It's probably because you have a module that is that has the design settings that are overriding what you have set in the theme customizer. So if you have a new layout, for example, like uh, this is a fashion layout here, and you want to regain the control of adjusting all of these elements using the theme customizer, then you will need to go into the design settings of these modules and just restore the defaults uh, for those so that we can then come to the theme customizer and make those adjustments globally. Uh, that'll make it easier in the future if you wanted to make, you know, broad scale changes. So um, I could, of course, adjust the body text. Um, I could give it a, a line height change. Um, I could also adjust my header text size, my default header text size. And of course, letter spacing as well. I could also adjust the line height of my header. Along with making it bold, italic, or uppercase, or even underlined. And of course, I could always change the default font. This is a crucial uh, step in setting up your theme to establish a header font and a body font. I'm going to select Playfair Display for my header font. And for my body font, I'm going to use Poppins. My body link color will be inherited from my theme accent color, but I could override that and change it to whatever I want here. Um, I could change my body text color. Maybe I want to give it a little bit darker.
and also hit our text color. And that concludes our overview of the layout and typography settings within the theme customizer.